Hi guys, this is Felix at Low Power Lab, and in this video I'd like to show you a new method of making SMD prototyping stencils. Uh, I just finished uh, making this PCB board and it came in from uh, Oshpark in the mail today, and I need a stencil for it. Uh, I know some of you may have seen my video where I show how to uh, chemically etch a metal stencil from a soda can, and I think this method is still great for uh, those of you who have the patience and want to give this method a try and a chance. I know there's uh, people that just get frustrated, it doesn't work the first time they try it and then they just give up, but those of you who are persistent I think uh, have gotten great results and uh, the quality is really very nice. And uh, I've used this particular one I think for, for you know many many applications and it's just as good as new. Uh, here's another example, and uh, again, use this one many, many times, and they don't wear out. So, you know, it's a very accessible method. Uh, chemicals and materials are, you know, they're cheap, so uh, anyone can do it. But today, I want to show you a new method that I've uh, sort of discovered once I got my new laser cutter, and uh, this is to use a laser cutter to laser etch a mylar stencil. This is a transparency plastic. It's mylar. It's very uh, cheaply available at you know, your office supply store or online and you can use a laser cutter to laser etch a stencil and get uh, very good quality as well. And uh, I know there's a couple tutorials online that show you how to laser cut a stencil instead of laser etch. Uh, and that works fine but you typically have to uh, shrink the pads because uh, the laser kerf as it cuts it will uh, leave this burnout effect and it will tend to enlarge the apertures of the SMD uh, pads. And that's also true for the chemical method. Uh, you have to do that because uh, you cannot finally control the chemical reaction. So you always have to uh, kind of have a feel for how much to shrink the pads. So, you know, it's, it's a bit time consuming and it's not very ideal. Also, uh, when you laser cut a stencil in plastic, it will leave this uh, plastic burnt residue behind around the pads and that's you know you can feel that with your hand after the laser is done cutting and uh, it's not it's not very ideal because uh, you have to clean the stencil every time you apply paste because paste will get stuck between that residue and the stencil and it's gonna be kind of messy sometimes so uh, again not very ideal but the laser etching method is I think giving great results and uh, I'll show you how to uh, do this. You have to uh, first export a cream layer from uh, your PCB software to a format that your laser cutter can understand and then have the laser cutter etch those uh, outlines instead of uh, cutting them. So also another thing you have to watch out is balancing the power and the speed of the laser. So typically when you etch, the laser uh, will uh, travel at much higher speeds and also power will be much lower. On my laser cutter, I have uh, you know max output of 60 watts. So for laser etching a stencil like this, I set it at about um, 25 to 30 watts of output, and also speed will be around 400 to 450 millimeters per second. So uh, I'll go ahead and show you how to export the cream layer from Eagle CAD, and then uh, we'll send that to the laser and see uh, uh, how this comes up. All right, so we're here in Eagle CAD, and this is my PCB. And the first thing I want to do is hide all the existing layers and only show the top cream layer. And that's going to give me all the SMD pads that I care to laser etch. And now I want to export this to DXF AutoCAD. And uh, notice the export units are set to millimeter. And now I want to open this in Coral Draw because I want to make some changes. And I'll have to match the import units to the export units, otherwise the scaling is going to be all wrong. And I have this uh, GST connector where I have some through holes at the end of these two pads, so I don't want paste to go in those uh, through holes. So I want to resize these two pads slightly. And now I will export this to DXF format again. And I'll leave export units to inches since my laser cut software will import with that by default. 
and this is laser cut 5.3 which is what my uh, laser cutter talks to and I will import the file that I just produced in Coral and this will import as a new layer and it's all uh, black right now so this layer is already set to engrave and the speed is 470 millimeters per second and power is at 25 watts so uh, I will download this to the laser cutter and uh, we'll take a look at how the laser will uh, actually etch all these out I use this method to etch all my prototype stencils. You can even etch large panel stencils with this method and the results are just as good. Online services like Osh stencils are very affordable and use the same technique, but instead of Mylar they use Kapton and they've gotten better over time at etching very small SMD pads. However, I find that Kapton can be too thin for a good paste deposition, especially with larger components. It's also curvy since it comes in rolls from the manufacturer. So I think Mylar has two advantages over Kapton. It's 4 mil thick instead of about 2 mil of the Kapton, and 4 mil is a pretty popular thickness of commercial stainless steel stencils. Also, it's perfectly flat, which helps very much with keeping it flat on the laser bed while etching, and also it saves time when applying the paste. So there we go. If you have access to a laser cutter and don't want to wait a few days for an online service, you can laser etch your own SMT stencils out of Mylar in just a few minutes. I hope you found this video useful. Thanks for watching and don't forget to subscribe to my channel. See you next time.